Hello, I'm Andrew McInerney, Artistic Director of the Studio de Musique Ancienne de Montréal. It gives me great pleasure to introduce these pre-concert conversations for our 2018 and 2019 season. Hello everyone, this is Georges Leroux. I'm from the Department of Philosophy at UCAM and I'm very happy to have a little conversation on the concert of Studio de Musique Ancienne de Montréal in the company of Nathalie Michaud. Bonjour. Hi, everybody. This is Nathalie Michaud. I'm a musician and I've been working at McGill University and uh, as well with Les Idées Heureuses as a musician, as a performer. For the set of three cantatas, part of the larger series of Arte Musica at Salle we will have three cantatas, 59, 126, 197. Uh, celui qui même gardera ma parole in French, uh, wer mich liebt, der wird mein Wort halten. Uh, the, the one who loves me, uh, he will save my word. And uh, er halte uns her by dein and fort. Uh, keep us, Lord, uh, by your word. And the third one, 197, God is unser Zuversicht. Uh, God is our um, protection. So we have three cantatas here who have a common theme. This theme is linked with the Pentecost mm -hmm. in the church services. And um, this theme goes back to Luther, of course. Uh, it's wonderful music, and I would like very much to hear you uh, about this music. First of all, the first thing that I would like to discuss or to bring to the attention of everybody is the instrumentation that Bach has decided to use to celebrate those three cantatas. And of course, probably he was also using the musicians he had on hand because they were not necessarily all available all the time. But this time, he must have had a fabulous, virtuosic trumpet player because you will hear in the uh, beginning of the Cantata 126 a huge symphonia, a very big, large instrumental uh, section where, uh, well, you would almost think you're listening to a Brandenburg concerto or a trumpet concerto. Anyhow, it is grandiose and uh, really taking advantage of his instrumentation. So uh, a string uh, orchestra, of course, with that, oboes and uh, bassoons, which are typical as well in the usage of, uh, of his cantatas. So... Beautiful instruments, loud instruments, and happy instruments. That's yeah, full why, of joy. Full, full of, of joy. joy. So we're going to have grandiose music in that respect. So, but Bach will not always use the whole uh, efficient uh, orchestra. Sometimes he will use only one instrument, two instruments, and he will really take us through 20 movements in these three cantatas, 20 movements where we will have a variety of sounds of choice of instruments, choice of voices, everything always in close contact with the text that he is putting together to express it. So, uh, as I said, we will have areas, for example, where the two oboes will be mingling together and making a beautiful canvas of music along with the singer, and uh, sometimes we will have the bassoon and who will come to and interject and bring his presence. And then, uh, of course, the oboes uh, are used here uh, very efficiently by Bach. The recitativo, uh, sometimes they will be with obbligato instruments. And this is extremely beautiful. I want to bring it to your attention because we often not listen to recitativo enough. And musically as well. It's not just the text. I mean, of course, the text is forward. But the instrumentation that is behind, even if it's only the harpsichord or the organ, but in one of these uh, recitativo, he's using the violins that are just floating and bringing a beautiful texture to the sound. And then grandiose chorals and uh, choir moments with the full orchestra as well. This is, th there are many of those, and I think this is perhaps one of the reasons these three cantatas were chosen to be performed by the Studio de Musique Ancienne. So 20 movements, as I said, uh, all bringing a lot of variety, all time very, uh, very full of surprise, everything to be marveling. But Bach did not only want us to be marveling 
about the sound and the beautiful sound that he's putting together. But the oratory, the text is very important. Please, George, tell us more about how to listen to the text. I'm very happy to uh, bring in some remarks at this point. Uh, the text of these three cantatas, they sort of merge together mm -hmm. into one unique predication whose center is the theme, the Lutheran theme of Reformation, that is faith. In, of course, the promise of God to keep his word. The term word, uh, of course, means the fact that the evangelium is the word of God. Uh, it starts with St. John, but it goes on with Martin Luther's hymns. Uh, they're central here in these three cantatas. Now, here is the fact that we have a theme very special, uh, a theme that gets into the idea of our the way we live, the way we inhabit our existence. And this theme has to do with the importance of faith, uh, which is, of course, the central theme of Reformation. So when we start with Cantata 59, it is clear that the love of God will keep uh, its promise. It will always stand by the person who keeps his faith. This is important. And it is very near Cantata 106, Actus Tragicus, which is one of my preferred cantatas. Now, the second cantata, uh, it is an appeal, a prayer, with a wonderful duet of voices, choral recitativo, uh, with a lesson on the enemy. So why is this theme of the enemy sort of uh, popping up into that 126? Well, uh, it's a Political cantata is very rare in Bach's works that we have this idea of what was in front of Bach. Well, the, the Reformation, of course, had enemies from the beginning, from the 16th century. And in this cantata, well, the text quotes the presence of the Muslims, the Turks, and of course the Pope, the Catholic Pope, as enemies. They're part of this Feindlich, this uh, enemy city full of uh, false members of the community. So it's incredible because it's filled with rage. The Basso area, uh, the, the fourth item of this cantata, uh, appeals to you know, strike the, the enemy. So we'll, we have here something very different and I would say sort of unique in Bach's works. And finally, we have the third cantata uh, full of majesty, joy, uh, something very, very, very deep in the, the search for faith and confidence in God with the theme of God as as a protector, someone who is going to keep his word. And since the cantata accompanies the spouses, men and women, who s sort of start a new life in faith, the theme here of faith is about the fact that God will absolutely protect each of the spouses. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful with the marvelous chorale with the hobo, uh, which absolutely appeals to love as a divine feeling uh, whose metaphor is the divine flame. Uh, I'm not sure if you like it. I, I know you like it. You love yeah. it as I do. Yes. But maybe this chorale is not your preferred part in the cantata. Uh, you might like uh, something different, like the alto area, maybe. Oh, that's my favorite. Is that right? Oh, my gosh. Yes, this is a beautiful. It's like the, uh, the sleep the sleep oh, yes. theme. It's like oh, this image is wonderful. Putting the baby to sleep, or and then these long notes. It's like the beautiful Schlummert ein, yes. uh, oh, reminiscent yes. of the oh, cantata. Yes. Yes. Ich habe genug. Yes, and, yes, yes. Oh, that's my sleep, favorite. Sleep, sleep. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So we have a wonderful set here of three cantatas, uh, united by a wonderful theological team, uh, the faith, the Reformation team of faith, uh, with wonderful music, and we're looking for to uh, this wonderful concert. 